Hello everyone, welcome to an anime review brought to you by Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. And about a month ago, we released our statement to Gigic regarding modern classics in anime. We contend that even in the heavily seasonal lineup of anime shows that we get each year, there are still many classics in the making. And I personally find it ironic that Gigic would have had this opinion this year that there are no more classics in anime when I think that 2019 is delivering some of the strongest anime that we've seen in a while. Real game changers and ones that have and still are forging a legacy for beautiful and captivating storytelling. And so if you want to hear more about our general response to Gigic and our opinion as a harem, please check out our video, Anime Talk, What is a Classic Anime? Now, I want to keep this conversation of modern classics going by focusing on anime from this year that I feel confident will be remembered as hallmarks of 2019 and might even become game changers for storytelling in future anime. And the show I want to begin with is The Promised Neverland. This gorgeously rendered story is a wonderful psychological thriller and horror retelling of the great escape. Set in a world where demons have usurped authority over humanity, children are raised in special orphanages where they are blissfully unaware of their reality, so their brains develop to premium quality. Premium quality food, that is. Our main cast of Emma, Norman, and Ray discover the truth about their home, that it is a dangerous farm, and decide that they are going to escape and take all of their orphan siblings with them. Thus ensues a dangerous game of cat and mouse and a battle of wits as the children must plan their escape with limited information and resources while evading the chillingly calm Mama and the erratic and plotting Sister Crona and a horde of angry demons. The first season of The Promised Neverland is fantastic for a number of reasons. At the forefront of these reasons is the dynamic trio of Emma, Norman, and Ray. These highly gifted children might be way smarter than your average 11 year old, but you don't question it as much as you think you would, because you clearly see them as kids playing, eating, talking, and having fun with their siblings. It's really quite easy to buy into that these are 11 year old children. It is genuine and it feels real. Also, it feels pretty real when you see their horrified expressions, especially when Norman and Emma see Connie dead and see demons for the first time roaming just outside the confines of their peaceful yard. And just like children, they make mistakes. And what is incredible is watching these kids overcoming every difficulty in creative ways that really only a kid would be the first to see. Now, many publishers and writers out there hesitate to push a dark and mature story where children are the leads because they fear it would be cheesy and unrelatable. But The Promised Neverland shows otherwise, that it can actually work. Another reason why this show should already rank among the classics is its high intelligence. And no, it's not on a level of Death Note. And the characters aren't stuck in the traditional shonen villain trope where you have to plan for every single freaking contingency conceivable! No, instead the show's characters show their brilliance by coming up with highly effective plans and games, finding out that their initial plans sometimes don't work, and then adapting to what they learn. It feels so real and any viewer can follow it without having to pause and look up facts and philosophies. This is a level of smartness that gets the audience hoping that the kids' plans will work, and when they crumble, you are legitimately scared that it is over for them. When the solution is presented, you're like, oh, that makes total sense. I would have thought of that if I weren't so on the edge of my seat. And that plays into another great aspect of the show. The key to the kids' escape lies in the reasonable and believable tools and solutions they have at their disposal. There are no power-ups, no amazing technology, or sudden revelations about a passageway that could solve everything. The children are forced to use matches, hangers, bedsheets, bottle rockets, and everyday items to escape. It's like MacGyver, but so much more believable. And because it is these things that help them escape, upon rewatch, you appreciate every game of tag more and every scavenger hunt and background activity because you can see how Norman and Emma lay the foundation for the orphans escape so early on. The entire narrative is brilliantly crafted around its main plot. 
and its hair-raising subplots and the little details that deliver those aha moments and emotional sucker punches. For example, Mama's lullaby that plays throughout the series is both calming and haunting as the plot picks up and the night of the daring escape draws nearer. When Mama finally realizes what the kids are up to and races to head them off, we get a flashback for her. And at first, I was really annoyed that this was cutting into the precious screen time for the nail-biting breakout scene, and because I am so over convenient flashbacks when the drama and the suspense are hitting their peak. But the moment Isabella's dear friend plays his song on the mandolin, you realize that it's actually her song. And you can't help but pause, and then you realize it's his own composition before he is taken and killed. And that tune becomes Isabella's reminder that she will do anything to survive as she takes the devil's deal and becomes Mama. But it hurts even more when you see that she is Ray's biological mother, the same child she is planning to ship off for food. In that exquisite moment as she stands there before Emma on the garden wall, you can see the utter conflict within her. It is a stunning and beautiful scene where we see Mama become the real mother for the first time and give her children a chance to escape and to live. Her own dream to escape, which she herself could not realize, will now live on in her kids. It humanizes Isabella in a way that I did not think was possible until the very end of the season. And upon rewatch, you can pick up the hints of human resistance plastered throughout the entire series and actually put in really subtly. The idea that humanity will never go belly up, but it will continue to resist and survive is dominant within the story, but not upon first watch. And speaking of rewatch, this show is so easy to binge. And not in a you-can-ignore-it-while-it's-in-the-background kind of a way. No, this show is binge-worthy, like I'm staying up until 6 o'clock in the morning reading the Da Vinci Code kind of way. The Promised Neverland does another thing that is rare to happen within uh, anime, especially with the protagonist, which when I saw it, I instantly enjoyed. And that's that the protagonist must sacrifice their pride and plans to win. So many anime have it where characters will not budge because of pride. If I do not do X, then who am I? I cannot betray my pride because I will just lose everything who I am. So I will stick to my guns and somehow I will succeed. Uh, engage an overdone sequence then of somehow winning against all odds with the hero gaining everything for nothing in return. I hate it. But for Emma, Norman, and Ray. They must each sacrifice something that they didn't want to in the beginning in order to win and escape. Norman must sacrifice his own freedom and fate, something which clearly terrifies him, in order to save Emma and the others. Ray, for his part, wants to die and rid himself of life because he feels it would be a win-win to help everyone escape in brutal, fiery fashion, and that he will be able to exit this life on his own terms. But he gives that up in order to follow Norman and Emma's plan. And Emma must leave the younger kids behind, something she had pledged earlier never to do. And she does this in order to save as many of the other children as possible. As a result, we will see them throughout the course of the story grow closer together, and it makes the season finale all the sweeter. It further ties into the underlying theme that humanity will continue to resist and survive in any way that it can. There's more that can be said about the Promised Neverland's plot, the redemptive moments for its villains, and the incredible world building. And all of these are reasons why this show is just so good and why its sequel season is well deserved. I firmly believe that the Promised Neverland is worthy of being called a classic. And if there is anything that you loved about The Promised Neverland after you've seen it, please share it in the comments. And if you haven't seen it yet, I don't care if I spoiled moments of the show for you. It is still an incredible watch, even if you know some of the things that you should be looking for. And from a writer's take, this show does an incredible job at maintaining and heightening its emotional investment. The atmosphere is consistent throughout, and you get pulled in deeper with every episode. A good thriller does just that. As the story progresses, everything is leading to the finale and whatever twists lie at the end. Subtle clues and great character progression make this all work, and it's all just for a massive, beautiful payoff, like what you get at the end of The Promised Neverland. 
Now, if you want more writing advice or insights from us, please check out more of our videos and especially go listen to our podcast, Camille's Harem, found on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. And you can expect more anime reviews coming from us as we dive further into what we believe to be the classics of 2019. And you can also go check out writing exercises that Camille has assembled on our Pinterest page if you're interested in improving your writing. And you can engage in conversations with us over at our subreddit. Uh, links to those sites are in the description. And if you know of any terrible fanfics, we would love to have them. So we can do epic readings of them for your enjoyment. Please send us links to those terrible gems via our Twitter at Camille's Harem. And until the next video, y'all, tschüss.